now, Father. Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Do you long for God's glory more than anything else? In what ways does your life show this to be true? What qualities and actions in Jesus' life revealed God's glory? How can you obtain a greater thirst for a close-up of God's glory? What is Christ's glory? First of all, it is His eternal majesty, as God said in John 17, 5, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Everything the Psalms say about God can be applied to Jesus Christ, where it says God is very great and clothed in splendor and majesty. That's also Jesus Christ's glory, splendor, majesty, beauty, power, and wisdom. Jesus Christ's glory is His splendor as Savior and Redeemer. The worship described in the book of Revelation focuses on Jesus as the Lamb, who was slain before the foundation of the earth. Even in heaven, the worship will be centered on the glory of Jesus Christ and His work on the cross as our Savior and Redeemer. I can't wait to see His wounds. I have often thought that someday I will look at the wounds Jesus bore for me. I will look at the hands that were pierced because He will still bear the marks. I will look at the head that was crowned with thorns for me. I will see the face of the one who went to the cross for me. Won't that be wonderful to thank him face to face and say, why would you do that for me? We still adore him for his glory as our Savior and Redeemer. How is Christ descent to earth part of his glory? Suppose a king was traveling in his carriage, surrounded by pomp, majesty, glory, and riches. This king is exceedingly handsome, wise, and successful in military victories. Multitudes of his subjects shout their praises and worship him along the way. But as he is carried along the road, he sees a beggar, covered with filth and court in a huge cruel bear trap that is killing him. The beggar is torn with wounds and covered with his own filth. If the king told one of his soldiers to go down and free the beggar and clean him up, people would praise the king for his kindness and compassion. But suppose that the beggar had rebelled against the king and that for years very time the king went by the beggar through mud and spit and cursed the king's name. What if the beggar was setting the trap to kill the king when he passed by and would have done so but got caught himself? Then what if the king takes off his royal robes, gets out of his carriage, weighs down into the mud and the filth, and as the beggar is cursing him, rips open the trap and sets him free. What if the trap snaps shut on the king and crushes him in filth and pain, anguish and death? Yet somehow the king rises from the dead and comes out of the trap, takes this beggar, cleanses him, places a crown on his head and puts one of his own robes on him. Then the king places his hands on the beggar's head, somehow transforming this beggar's rebellious heart to a heart of love that desires to serve the king. Any king that could do that deserves glory. What a king! Who would go through all that for that beggar? We would say that king had glory, but in a sense he acquired more glory because of his wonderful act of redemption. Jesus was infinite in glory from the beginning and could not have any glory added to him. But in a sense, he acquired more glory, or rather displayed more glory, as Savior and Redeemer. What a glorious King! 
Stay with us and let's look at the following story. An old tree. Once upon a time, there was a, a leafy tree in a field. Leaves grew densely on the tall branches. The roots were deeply into the ground. The tree was the most remarkable among the rest. The tree then became the home for some birds. They built their nests and they lived on his branches. The birds made holes in him and they hatched their eggs within the greatness of the tree. The tree felt so delighted because he was accompanied as he walked through his long-lasting days. People were grateful for the presence of the tree. They often came over and sheltered under him. Under his branches, they sat down and opened their picnic baskets. This tree is very useful. That's what the people said every time they went home from shelter. The tree was very proud hearing those compliments. However, time went on. The tree was beginning to be sick. His leaves and twigs were falling. Then his body became thin and pale. The greatness he used to have was fading away. Birds felt reluctant to build their nests there. No one could come to sit under the tree to shelter anymore. The tree wept. Oh God, why is it so hard for me? I need friends. Now no one would come close to me. Why do you take all the glory I used to have? The tree cried loudly, so it echoed throughout the forest. Why wouldn't you cut me down so I don't have to bear this suffering? The tree kept on crying and his tears were running down his dry body. Seasons came and went, but his condition had not changed. The tree was still feeling lonely. His branches became drier and drier. Every night the tree wept and cried until the morning broke. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Ah, what was that noise? Oh, it's a little baby bird who has just pipped from the egg. The old tree woke up from his daydream. Chip, chip, chip. The noise became louder and louder. There was another baby bird. Not long after that, the tree became noisy because of the birth of the new baby birds. One, two, three, and four baby birds have been born to this world. Ah, he has answered my prayers, exclaimed the old tree. The day after, there were many birds flying to the old tree. They were going to build new nests. The dry branches have turned out to attract their attention to nest there. The birds felt warmer to stay inside the dry branches instead of their place before. The number of birds was increasing and there were more kinds of them. Wow, now my days are brighter with their presence here, murmured the old tree gladly. The old tree was back to cheer again and when he looked down his heart was flowing with joy. There was a new little tree growing near his roots. The new tree seemed to smile at him. The tears of the old tree was grown a little tree who would continue his devotion to nature. Dear friends, that's the way it is. Is there any lesson that we could take from the story? God always has secret plans for us. The Almighty God will always give us answers to our questions, even though it is not always easy to guess what this resolution is. Be certain that the omniscient God knows what's best for us. When there are times he sends temptation for us, in other times he gives us his overflowing blessings. The test he gives us isn't something that can't be overcome. When God gave the temptation to the old tree, actually he delayed in giving his glory. God didn't choose to cut the old tree down since he kept some secrets. God was testing his patience. So dear friends, be sure whatever temptation 
we are facing is a part of the chain of glory he's preparing for us. Don't give up and don't be discouraged. God always is there beside patient people. Let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, I have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. What a life is now mine, glory, grace and truth bulging in the same small space. I once gave to dullness, stinginess and deceit. And what a life now awaits me, glory, grace and truth in greater measure than I ever had imagined. I love you for filling my heart with your presence, for being just what my dull heart needed. Amen.